Tell me how emotional it is to see the Earth rise when you're on another celestial body or you're or orbiting the moon or you're on the moon. What's well, I think for all of us that have been there and seen the Earth rise, uh, it's uh, something entirely <coughs> different, something that's hard to ex explain to people on the ground. We've all <laughs> seen pictures of the yes. Earth from the moon, but until you see it sort of almost in three dimension, uh, you see, it is in three dimensions. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you? We don't see that out of out of photograph, but really, what you think about, you th you you think about there is a planet. <coughs> it has the mass to provide the gravity that keeps the water and an atmosphere contained. It's at the proper distance from the sun, not too far out, not too far in. Uh, to give us enough energy to evolve life. You know, a lot of the times I hear people say, <coughs> gosh, I hope I go to heaven when I die. You go to heaven when you're born. This is the place. This is it. Just think. It's the only, uh, only place, place in the solar system that has intelligent life. We know that for a fact now. Let me uh, add something to what, or pick it up with Jim left off, because it, it's, uh, it's not only three dimension, it's dynamic. The Earth doesn't just sit on that horizon. And by the way, Jim is the first, one of the first human beings ever to see that. That's right. On the, on the and that, I think, right. changed people's thinking a great deal. But it just doesn't sit there. It's, it's dynamic. It's moving. And when I went to the moon on Apollo 10, and you don't have to stand on the moon, although it adds a little bit to it. I had, the same feel I had the same feelings I want to express to you now. When you look back at the moon, it doesn't tumble. It doesn't move aimlessly. It moves with purpose. You can, you can look. You're no longer flying over rivers and coastlines and, and, and hometowns like you do in Earth orbit. You're seeing the entirety, the entirety of our planet, of, of, of Earth. The blues of the ocean, the whites of the snows and the clouds, uh, you can look from the North Pole to South Pole. You can, you can look across uh, from Africa, the Atlantic, to North America, the plains, the mountains. And as the world turns on an axis that you can't see but you know must be there, mm -hmm. you're looking at the other side of the world every 12 every hours. Think about that. Wow. You're just out there somewhere looking back at what's going on at, at this special place Jim is talking about. Right. And you have to, you have to, you almost feel you're, you're too fallible to try, try and suck it all in. You want to bring that home with you. And, and I, uh, I thought uh, way back on Apollo 10, I came to a conclusion it was just too beautiful to have happened by accident. It, you know, it, 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 it was some, there, there is a creator of this universe. Mm -hmm. And from our point of view, the Earth is the focal point. Mm -hmm. and, and I think I said it in the movie. I know I said it in the movie. But when I was on the moon for three days, I literally sat on God's front porch looking back home. That's the only way I can describe it. That's the only way. People say, what was it like? Mm -hmm. That's what it was like. That's an amazing image. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Wow. Let's talk a little bit about the future. So Gemini was really a, a training program or a, a way to, to, to work out some of the issues that were going to be needed to make sure that Apollo was successful. So if, if NASA is looking at Mars as the future, what's today's Gemini program to help us get to Mars? What's that look like? Well, I think we both agree that uh, I've often seen that we haven't fully utilized the moon the way we should. Uh, to really get a, a basis, a foundation for future space activities, we really have to concentrate on the moon instead of waiting some 42 years to, to go back, only to build up the infrastructure and the technology and the ability to feel comfortable exploring our nearby neighbor. Once we get that 
done. And once we feel very uh, hopeful that, and, 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 and reliable that we can do that with, mm -hmm. without too much problems, then that infrastructure could, could be expanded to eventually go to Mars. Mm -hmm. it, it's a long time process, I think. It's not just, you know, hey, we went to the moon, hey, tomorrow let's go to Mars. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you said, Germany, and I think you're exactly right. It was a training program. It was a gap between Mercury, could we exist in space or could we go to the moon? And so Germany became part of our lives. You can learn to rendezvous, you learn to walk in space, you learn to do all these long duration. Jim spent 14 days in that little Germany spacecraft and God help him. <laughs> I don't know how you did that, I really don't. But anyway, if that gap between Mercury and the moon, which Gemini was this big, the gap, and Jim's right, we gotta go back to the moon, we gotta, we gotta explore this research, we gotta learn to live long duration on the moon, we gotta learn to do things we don't even know we have to learn about yet. If the gap between Mercury and Apollo is this big, the gap between the moon and Mars is as wide as this auditorium. It is not gonna be easy, it's a different trip, when the time comes, I don't believe it's gonna take us nine months to get there because we're gonna have technology in a world of propulsion that's gonna get us there in three, two or three months, wow. 60 days, whatever, because I don't, nine months is intolerable to me and I don't wanna stay there 18 months and wait until the planets are aligned. We have so much to learn and, and you know, I say so little time, I guess we got the rest of the, all kinds of time to learn, but it's a little disappointing we haven't really focused in that direction. We talk, we right. talk about landing on, on, uh, on meteorites or whatever the hell they are and, uh, and uh, going to Mars, but we don't have a goal. We don't have a program. We don't have a mission. When Kennedy said we're going to the moon, we had a goal, we knew where we were going, we had a mission, and we knew what the timetable was. We're right. sitting here we're, we're going to select, I read in the paper, we're going to select more astronauts tomorrow morning, tomorrow, the day we left the moon 43 years ago and haven't gone anywhere since. We're going to select them. What are they going to do? And when, it, you know, they're not going to live, to, they're not going to go to the moon when they're, or the, the, uh, the Mars when they're 40 right. or 50, 60 right. years old. So we, we, we do a lot of talking, but there's not a lot of doing as far as I'm concerned, and I'm a critic in that world. But do you really think it is? We need to go back to the moon, we need to get a base established, more of a permanent type of residence For all to the really grandchildren learn. and children who are four and five, in fourth and grade, and fifth grade, and sixth grade, and eighth grade, stand by. They're the ones that are gonna take us. And that's the whole purpose of the Adler Planetarium. You know, is to incite young yes, people to yes, come through yeah, yeah. And, and to b form as a catalyst to give them some idea about uh, following a technical career. Curiosity yes. is the essence of human existence. That's very What's true. over the mountain? What's around the corner? You pick up the telephone, where are you? We're all curious, so what is it like? What, I can't even imagine what it would be like to be on Mars and look back at the Earth. Uh, I'm just gonna see a little <laughs> blue ball, a star out there somewhere. Right, right, right. But we'll go. Yeah. Discovery. It's yeah, just, yeah. It's just it's, our nature. It's in our nature. It's, it's in our psyche. It will happen. So I want, I want to close this out with one, one other question. Um, you, your astronauts, the Apollo programs inspired an entire generation. I know I became an engineer because of the Apollo program and watching all of you uh, explore the, the universe, or explore the moon at least. But there's a whole group of, of younger generation people in this audience. What words of wisdom, what encouragement would you give them in order for them to continue pursuing um, exploration of the universe? You know, exploration can be going back to the moon, going to Mars. Exploration can be anything else within your life that you have a passion for. I wonder what it's like to be or do or go. And believe in yourself. I, I just believe in yourself. My dad always used to tell me, he said, all I'm gonna ask for you to do in your life, from the, in the classroom, on a football field, wherever it is, is your best. And my grandkids have heard me say this. 
a lot. Just do your best, and someday, somewhere, in some profession, you're going to surprise yourself. And I truly believe that's, that's uh, very true. And like we say in naval aviation, good is never good enough. Huh? Remember that, kids. Good is never good <laughs> enough. Yeah, whatever your interest is, it doesn't have to be in at, uh, space programs or going to the moon or whatever a thing really you know, turns you on. Then concentrate on that and really learn all about that and then become an expert in that particular science or that particular vocation. We got doctors mm -hmm. and lawyers, lawyers, I'm sorry, time out. Doctors, <laughs> doctors and teachers out there yet to be. All I gotta do is be one badly enough. 